All right. All right, here we go. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Hopefully folks are uh, joining us through Zoom. You should be able to see the folks who are gathered here in person for this event. And also we'll be sharing, uh, doing some screen sharing soon. Sharing soon. But anyway, very uh, happy to welcome Neil Ryan. Neil, am I, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Neil Ryan from Keep Massachusetts, beautiful. Yes. I, uh, I was so happy uh, to find out about this organization. I was mentioning to Neil earlier, one of my pet peeves is litter. When I'm walking my dog and I see cigarette butts, trash cans and beer cans, what have you. So I, I know that, uh, and I knew Neil will speak to this, that uh, Keep Massachusetts Beautiful has programs that help uh, local citizens um, develop and implement beautification programs and anti-litter programs. And uh, which they say is a, a subject that's near and dear to my heart, as well as a variety of other programs. So um, anyway, a great, a great uh, nonprofit program. Uh, uh, and uh, maybe some folks participating today will be um, motivated to start their very own local um, community cleanup and anti-littering program. So without further ado, Neil, I'll let you take it away and talk about Keep Massachusetts Beautiful, and then he'll take questions at the end of his presentation. Thank you. All right, thanks, Harriet, um, and welcome, everyone. Um, I'm the director and founder of Keep Massachusetts Beautiful, and um, thanks for joining us today to talk some trash. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here and share a presentation with you. Um, since we are a relatively small group here, um, I'm gonna say, if you have questions as I'm going along, just feel free to raise your hand uh, if you're uh, in the room or if you're online, if you know how to do that, you can also raise your hand or uh, just, uh, Folks can also enter questions in the chat box. And um, yeah, yeah. Or, okay. yeah. So, right. yeah. Okay. If this is a group of 50 people that would get unwieldy, but since it's relatively small. Group, I appreciate your flexibility, you know, and yes, I see your screen. Yeah. So, um, so I launched Keep Massachusetts in 2014. Just on a little personal note, my anti litter crusade started here in Mansfield uh, in 2008, where driving around town complaining to my wife in the car about all the litter I was seeing for the umpteenth time, she finally said to me, well, you know, instead of just complaining about it, why don't you do something about it? So uh, here I am, uh, what is how many, how many, 16 years later, is that right? Is my math right? Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, Started locally with uh, Keep Mansfield Beautiful. We, we organized a, a first event was a you know a townwide cleanup. We thought, well, if we get a hundred people, this will be a success. And that first year, we had like over six hundred people uh, volunteering, and uh, we've had that number every year, every spring. And we clean up you know every major road in town every spring, and then we launched other programs uh, to beautify our downtown area with flower barrels. We did. Uh, uh, adopt a spot program, adopt a street program. So that was all very successful here in Mansfield. And I would go to the national conference, which is hosted by Keep America Beautiful, which is the national nonprofit. So some of you may, or I think we're all old enough to remember those ads on TV, public service announcements, the so-called crying Indian uh, PSAs, where uh, you know, the Native American is on the side of the road and someone throws the trash at his feet and there's a tear in his eye. A um, little fun fact for you that that person was actually not a Native American, he was an Italian American actor. So, um, but, um, you know, that ad really, you know, had, had an impact on me as a young person. Um, and I think it had an impact on lots of people. Um, and uh, so going to the national conference every year, I'm the only person there from Massachusetts. And it really just kind of got to me. I'm like, why isn't anyone in Massachusetts doing something about this? So that's where I launched the Keep Massachusetts Beautiful to take what I know works on a local level as it has in Mansfield, you know, across the state. So today we now have uh, roughly 40 chapters around the state. Um, including one in Barnstable, keep Barnstable beautiful. And I'll talk about a little bit more about that uh, in a little bit. 
Um, just at a high level, our mission here is, uh, the mission statement is pretty self-evident, uh, but really the, the two key words to me are taking action. So we are really action oriented. It's um, really about getting people out there, cleaning up, beautifying their own streets, their own neighborhoods, their own towns and cities. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, there are many other not environmental nonprofits, including many on the Cape that are all doing great work. Uh, a lot of them are doing things like advocating for new laws and things like that, um, which is helpful, but we really focus on just getting people involved. And beyond the obvious kind of physical benefits of cleaning up um, our towns and cities, there is also, uh, you know, it may sound cheesy, but it really brings people together. Um, I don't know if you might have seen WBZ Channel 4 News in Boston last week did a profile on our Keep Framingham Beautiful, uh, Keep Framingham Beautiful chapter. And they really talked a lot about how uh, that's an amazingly successful chapter, how, how uh, it's brought people together, new friendships, you know, people know their neighbors and so forth. So there is that other kind of uh, intangible element to all of this. Um, and that was especially true during COVID where, you know, we were all pretty isolated and uh, going outside pick, to clean up your neighborhood is actually a relatively safe thing, even when there's a pandemic going on. Um, the, uh, this is just a, a photo of a, a event we did last uh, April. I guess it's actually WBZ. We had a couple of, uh, of the uh, meteorologists joined us. So this is at a lake in Marlboro. Uh, we do these types of events in the greater Boston area uh, much of the year, not all of the year. Um, and our four primary areas that we focus on, uh, as you might imagine, are litter prevention and cleanup. So we currently do a lot more on the cleanup side and we want to do more on the prevention side. Um, and we want to do that at a statewide level. So we've been advocating uh, with to our governor, lieutenant governor, the head of Mass Department of Transportation and others to form a anti-litter uh, public service campaign similar to that crying Indian uh, ad that I mentioned. Um, uh, you know, a Massachusetts themed PSA to raise awareness about the problem, educate people that they shouldn't be littering in the first place. Uh, Cause you think about it, litter is a solvable problem. I mean, if we could simply change behaviors and convince people not to litter, uh, what we do wouldn't be necessary. And I sometimes say our goal is to put ourselves out of business so that what we do isn't needed. Um, but, um, so that's, so that's an obvious area of focus, waste reduction and recycling. So, you know, we have so much trash that we all generate every day. Um, how can we reduce that in the first place by, you know, reusable water bottles and coffee mugs and things of that nature, uh, reducing our reliance on single use plastic, um, promoting repair or reuse and repair and recycling. Um, and then this third bullet, beautification and community, community greeting, you know, encompasses, um, you know, local adopt a spot programs where you beautify, you know, public areas, medians, uh, public gardens. We have a program uh, for pollinator friendly gardens. Um, and then finally, you know, the kind of catch all of environmental education, just uh, educating people of all ages about what they can do as an individual to help our environment. Um, you know, it can be overwhelming when you think about climate change and carbon footprints. Um, and what we kind of talk about is, you know, what are simple things that, you know, we can all do? Like I mentioned, reusable water bottles. So a simple thing. Uh, there's a comic I had seen at one point, you know, it just says, you know, well, what, what's one more, what, what does it matter if I don't, if I use a single use plastic water bottle said, you know, so said 8 billion people, you know, so that's the problem. So we have so many people if, if everyone's doing the wrong thing, the, the impact is huge. So, uh, so we're trying to educate people on, you know, the actions they can take on an individual level to try to uh, 
improve uh, their local environment. Um, so as far as uh, the programs we offer uh, to reduce litter, number one is the Great Massachusetts Cleanup. And that is really just the collective uh, impact of all of the local cleanups that happen through our chapters, as well as non-affiliated groups. Um, so we encourage any town or city or organization that is, that is uh, organizing a community cleanup to A, they can register it on our website. Uh, we'll put it on our event calendar, which will hopefully uh, draw more volunteers to that event. Um, and then also to report the results. So um, on our website's homepage, you can see like our year to date results as far as how much trash we've picked up, how many volunteers, what the economic value of all that free labor is. Um, so uh, unfortunately, a lot of, not everyone reports their results. We, they, they need reminders, <laughs> but um, uh, that, so we, we encourage, you know, really every town or city should at least have one usually springtime cleanup uh, after the snows have melted, assuming we get snow. Um, uh, and then, uh, but ideally spring and fall and then supplemented with other smaller cleanups throughout the year. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the second uh, program, the Mass Litter Cleanup Crew was really patched during COVID because that that hit in the spring of 2020 when we had all dozens of cleanups on our calendar that most of which were canceled. Um, and this, the idea for this was, well, what what can I as an individual do? You know, I was seeing people walking around my neighborhood. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Everyone's walking around trying to maintain their physical and mental health. And, and at that time, there was a particularly large lot of uh, uh, COVID related litter, you know, you had plastic gloves on the ground, masks everywhere. So the idea was like, well, geez, why don't we give people the equipment and they can make themselves useful as they're walking? So this program is really targeted for anyone who wants to just do their part, clean their own street. Maybe you walk your dog a certain route every day or go to a certain park um, and just incorporate it into your daily or weekly, monthly routine. So if you sign up, you basically take the pledge. You say, I'm gonna keep Elm Street and East Ham litter free. And we ship you uh, a litter grabber tool, a pair of gloves, a reusable bag, a little shop, a little trash bag for your car that you attach to the headrest in your car and a stylish t-shirt if you so choose to, to have us send you one. And um, so we've shipped about 1300 of those kits around the state. So that's uh, been pretty successful um, and, and kind of introduces people to this world of, of, of litter cleanup. Um, so that's uh, uh, here is, shows you what, what's in the, in the kit here. Um, and uh, the, what's not pictured is that trash bag uh, for the car. Uh, but you can see uh, there's the URL or any, you'll find it on our website pretty easily. But um, so if that's of interest to you, we encourage you uh, to do, to uh, sign up. Um, as far as, you know, just looking at the bigger picture of how do we uh, reduce litter in our communities? Um, it really requires a, a collaboration between the local government, which also usually involves the Department of Public Works, our local chapters, and the business community, which often sometimes provides funding uh, to our local chapters. Um, so, uh, so that's something we always uh, always uh, counsel our local chapters is to have that good relationship. Um, sometimes people get fired up and say, oh, I'm going to clean up this town and I'm the new sheriff in town. And they come in and they, they might kind of step on some toes. Uh, so we always say, you know, reach out to your local leaders first, kind of get the lay of the land, gather the facts, see who's doing what already. And then um, from there, see what, see what, uh, what the next steps might be. Um, in regards to waste reduction and recycling, we offer a program 
called Talking Trash and Recycling. Uh, this one, particular one was with Acton, but we do it um, through libraries uh, uh, and, and businesses and schools sometimes. Uh, so we it's delivered either in person or, or via Zoom. Uh, this also launched right in the spring of 2020, right when COVID hit. So it was supposed to originally be in person uh, exclusively. And then with COVID, we, you know, we quickly learned how to use Zoom, right? Um, and uh, now it's usually delivered online. But this program really goes into the, uh, the ins and outs of, of like, where does our trash go here in Massachusetts? Um, you know, whether it's to one of the few remaining landfills in the state, or a lot of it is now shipped on trains out of state, or it goes to an incinerator. Um, so we talk about the fact that we're running out of capacity here in Massachusetts of where to put it. And then we get into recycling best practices, which, you know, is complicated. Um, but we, you know, and we don't, we don't, you know, we know that recycling is not the end all be all. It's not gonna solve the big problem, but it's it's a piece of the puzzle. But, and the key is if we're going to recycle to do it correctly, because a lot of people get confused and they put things that shouldn't be in the recycling in the bin or vice versa. They're putting things that should be recycled in the trash. Uh, so we get into some of the finer details on that. Um, and then we also get into the, the, the issue of litter and, and how, if you have a local chapter, um, you can uh, uh, address the litter problem locally. Um, I mentioned under uh, beautification and community greening, we have a plant something uh, be beautiful program. Um, so we give out 10,000, oops, gonna go back, um, give out $10,000 in grants um, every year. Uh, through this program. Uh, we have a sponsor that thankfully provides that funding. Uh, so we just announced this year's grants and these, these go for the planting of public pollinator friendly gardens. So the, uh, we, uh, the South Dennis Library actually got a grant this year. So they're going to plant a, uh, a pollinator garden in front of the library. Last year, the, uh, the library in Bourne also got a similar grant. Um, so this is a, a pretty successful program. We get a lot of, a lot of applications from all over the state for this. I have a, a quick question. Also, if someone were uh, interested in applying for those grants and they should contact a local nonprofit agency, like their library, or if there's, does it have to be a 501c3 organization to actually receive the grant? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, the answer is no, actually. Um, it's a reimbursement grant. So, you know, we, we have funded individuals, individual people who say, I'm going to do this project. Um, you know, what we do is, uh, you know, if, they're, if approved, we say, all right, you know, do your project, send us the receipts of the, you know, supplies that you had to buy, plants, you know, re relevant supplies. Um, we like to see kind of a photo, you know, a before and after photo. Uh, and then, uh, and so we will we will reimburse them for whatever their grant amount was. So it doesn't have to be a nonprofit. Great, thank you. Sure. Uh, and then I mentioned our local chapters. So this is really where we're, we're focused on trying to fill in this map um, because I mentioned earlier, there are many environmental nonprofits all around the state. A lot of towns have you know, they might have a sustainable East Ham group or a, a, a green Provincetown group, you know, and, then, and they're working on, you know, sometimes they're working on different issues, you know, so they might be addressing big things like climate change and so forth. But, um, you know, our local chapters, you'll see these kind of clusters um, because what happens is, um, and this map is actually needs to be updated because Barnstable is not reflected on here yet. Um, uh the you know people in in next in the town next to barnstable where's my map let's see i got it right here and people in yarmouth are saying geez look at all this work they're doing in barnstable to clean up the town how come we're not doing that and then it, you know it kind of spreads that way 
so Barnstable is our foothold on the Cape. Uh, I know there are, like I said, many other nonprofits, like you could say competing nonprofits. There's a CARE for, for the Cape and Islands you may be familiar with. Um, but uh, we still feel like, you know, our mission there's, is a niche that, that really is, is unfilled in most uh, Cape Cod towns. Um, there is also the, um, uh, um, if, if any of you may know Meg Morris, she's in, um, she lives in, in Barnstable. I can't remember the name of the village within Barnstable, but she's on our board of directors and she runs the Cape Cod Anti-Litter Coalition. So her, that, that organization really focuses on um, education and trying to get into schools, teaching young people. Um, but uh, so that, that's a great organization as well. Uh, but they're not out there actually doing, you know, doing, oh, she's in Brewster doing the cleanups. Um, and there's another successful group in Falmouth, the Falmouth Anti-Litter Coalition. I can't remember the exact name, but uh, they've done a lot of work in, in Falmouth. They've also were advocated for certain legislation, like uh, they banned the nip bottles, the small alcohol bottles in Falmouth and a couple of other Cape Cod communities, I believe. Um, so, um, so, you know, if anyone's interested um, or if you know someone who might be interested uh, in, in joining our, our network or getting something organized in East Ham, um, you would just go to this website that you see highlighted here, or obviously reach out to me. And I, you know, we, we guide our chapters um, on how to get started. And um, it's really kind of an evolutionary process. It's not like we have strict requirements. You have to do A, B, and C. It's all, we just kind of let people go at their own pace. I always tell our chapter leaders who sometimes get a little uh, stressed out. I'm like, hey, you know, like, you're doing this on a volunteer basis, so don't stress yourself out. You just go at your own pace. Um, so, so again, that's uh, where our local chapters currently reside. Um, and and then here uh, you can follow us on our various social media channels. Although I have to update this because we're no longer on Twitter. We're, we're, we're done with them, or X as it's called now. Um, and our YouTube channel mysteriously got deleted, which is uh, was kind of disappointing. Uh, so we're trying to figure out what happened there. But our most active chapter is uh, our channel is Facebook. So we have a Facebook group you can join. Um, and uh, someone mentioned earlier, we, we post a lot of content there on a continuing basis. Um, some of it's our own stuff. Some of it's just articles, you know, relevant articles uh, on these various related topics. I just want to say, I have looked at your, I can highly recommend your Facebook page. I have uh, found you have obviously several articles related to uh, beautification and literature, but also uh, uh, related topics such as helping to curb emissions and, and that type of thing and various interesting uh, practices that uh, including emerging, emerging practices to help uh, uh, reduce carbon emissions and greenhouse gas emissions, what have you. So that's all greatly appreciated. So I know I have a couple of questions, but first, does anybody here or online have any questions? You had a question. Well, it has to do with the heat. I don't know if it's appropriate here. Oh, okay. Well, go. well in my house, I have the splits. I have a gas fireplace insert mm -hmm. and I have gas heat. And I've asked this question. What is the most environmentally friendly device for me to use? I will get back to you on that. I'm okay. actually on the Climate Action Committee, so if I could get your name okay. and contact right. information, I will follow up with folks who uh, are very knowledgeable about okay. that kind of thing. So thank you. Well, that's funny. I just I just asked asked my uh, furnace guy the same question about an hour ago. So because uh, <laughs> he's here looking at our furnace. So. Uh, uh, and they installed a mini split in the office I'm in right now last spring. So, um, so he he's he, I'm waiting for his answer on that. Does anyone else have a question? Either or one of our Zoom participants, you can uh, 
you can uh, pop your quick picture question in the chat or uh, we can un un um, mute you or okay all right well so um it sounds like neil is it's pretty if so if someone were interested and uh, say starting something in East Ham, so they can do it both as an individual. I think you mentioned that people can um, ask for one of your kits with a t-shirt, what have you. And I think sometimes that's helpful because when you see somebody, um, I think a lot of us, as I mentioned earlier, pick up trash as we're you know, walking our dog or something, but I think seeing someone with a t-shirt and I think that helps to uh, raise awareness about it and, and the way to connect with other people. But also it sounds like it's pretty easy also just to contact you or through your, your website if somebody wants to, um, it's a little bit more ambitious and they want to, you know, organize some of their neighbors. That That's a, kind of a step yeah. back the easy process. One, one other idea is if you have uh, grandkids and you want to introduce them to the wonderful world of litter cleanup, <laughs> you can, uh, order them a litter cleanup kit for Christmas. There you go. Uh, uh, say, kids, we're putting you to work. But, um, you know, it is a good way to kind of, you know, raise uh, environmentally conscious uh, conscious uh, kids or grandkids, get them involved at a young age. I think it's interesting also, and, and for me, awareness raising that you said, uh, we're running out of landfills in, in Massachusetts. And I know when I look at those very, unfortunate pictures from, from Florida and all those states, you see just oh. amazing debris. And of course, in addition to the human toll and cost and tragedy, I, and another question I have is, my goodness, where does all of that go? But it's interesting to hear in, uh, here in Massachusetts, where we haven't had that many natural disasters, our landfills are reaching capacity, and it's disturbing to hear that we might be shipping our our, our trash to someone else or somewhere right else. Now, yeah. Right now, about 20% of our trash is shipped either on rail or by truck uh, to as far away as Ohio, uh, South Carolina. It's crazy You think about it. You throw something in your trash barrel and it ends up in South Carolina. And which, as you might imagine, is quite expensive and only gonna get more expensive uh, you know, to, sh to ship trash that far. Um, they have more land out in those places, obviously, than we have available here in Massachusetts. Uh, we have a moratorium on the construction of any new landfills or incinerators. Um, and even if that were lifted, it'd be very, you know, the, if you're familiar with the, the NIMBY syndrome, not in my backyard, you know, so if they said, hey, we're gonna build a new incinerator in East Ham, you know, most people will say, well, that's great. We need one, but don't, you know, build it somewhere else. And, you know, <laughs> basically every town in Massachusetts will say the same thing. So, uh, so that, that's why we're having that problem uh, as far as any, any new capacity. Um, so it's, it's, it's a big challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. We have a and, and going back to the natural disasters. Yeah. I saw, you know, you're seeing the news of what's piled up on the streets there in Florida and, and, and what happened in North Carolina already, um, yeah, I saw one, you know, it was a lake that was basically yeah. just completely filled with debris and trash. Uh, and that, and, and this storm that's coming, like where that's all gonna end up in the ocean or a lot of it is gonna end up in the ocean. So it's very, very sad and disturbing. <laughs> very sad. And so uh, we do have a question from- I someone. do have a question about, I've been recycling and I, in Foxborough, so I know what you're talking about. And the Plainville, do you remember the Plainville? Uh, we used to call it uh, Mount Trashmore. Yeah, on, on Route 495? Yeah. Or, or 1A or 1, whatever it is. Yeah, I know where it is, yeah. 95. Well, anyway, so we Foxborough was very good at recycling. We are down here also. But people keep on telling me well, why do you recycle? It just goes in the trash anyway. Yeah, and that's not true. So <laughs> you can tell them that's not true. <laughs> uh, sometimes people get confused, and I've seen this because I'm in the Foxborough Facebook group because I'm, uh, sadly, there is no Keep keep Mass Beautiful chapter in Foxborough. I've actually presented to the select board there, and uh, for whatever reason, actually recently reached out to the new town manager, got no reply, so I don't know what... What's going on there? But um, 
sometimes people get uh, confused. They'll see some certain trucks, actually, it looks like it's all going into the same truck. Like they'll dump the trash into the truck and then they dump the recycling into the same truck. And you're like, well, what are they doing? But there's like two compartments in the truck. So one is for recycling, one's for trash. So that, that sometimes confuses people. Or there is articles that say, oh, no, yeah, it's all going in the trash anyway. And that is not true. Because I, I work with the Mass Department of Environmental Protection. First of all, they have strict rules about, you know, they what can go in the trash and what can't. They do inspections, you know, when the trucks come into these landfills or incinerators, they, they have inspections and they say, wait a minute, this, you know, this is this is all recyclable. You can't put you can't throw this in the trash. So there is enforcement. And then, you know, there's a big economy around it as, as well. I mean, uh, many jobs. Uh, so certain materials are definitely easier than others. So number one is like aluminum cans. Uh, we just had this in our newsletter, which I should mention, you can sign up on our website to get our newsletter. Um, you know, a can can go from the recycling bin back onto a shelf within 60 days. And, that, and that's actually, you can just rinse and repeat because it's highly easily recyclable cardboard, you know, your Amazon boxes, all that stuff, easily recyclable paper. <clears throat> uh, it gets more difficult with plastic and that is the, that is the challenge. So uh, there's varying reports about what percentage of plastic actually gets recycled. Um, and it's definitely on the low end uh, because there are different types of plastic. Some are more easily recyclable than others. Uh, your plastic water bottles called PET plastic, that is actually in high demand because the companies that sell all these beverages have made these commitments that, hey, we're going to have 30% recycled material in our bottles, you know, so they need those bottles back uh, in order to meet those commitments. Um, but there are other types of plastic, you know, that are, I don't want to get too into the weeds here, but, you know, number fives and sixes that are much harder to recycle. Um, and, and the plastic industry has kind of put forth this myth that, yeah, plastic is so easily recyclable. It's not. Um, and we'd be better off if we just had less of it to begin with. Um, but they, you know, it's profitable for them. So they obviously don't want to see it go away. Um, but you are seeing some movement towards, you know, you, you sometimes see water now in aluminum cans, um, which is, you know, still more, it is more environmentally friendly than the plastic bottles. Not as environmentally friendly as a reusable bottle, but we know that's it's not always possible to have one with you. So, uh, so anyone who says recycling, oh, it's all, it's all BS is, is, is wrong. Neil, I have a, a, a question. So whenever I'm out in the grocery store, whenever when I'm looking for mustard or ketchup or particularly food items, I always try to buy, if possible, something in the glass container as opposed to a plastic container. Because of my belief, and perhaps uh, is, is am I correct in thinking that it's better as far as recycling to buy a glass container versus a plastic container? And then the counter argument is, well, Glass containers are heavier than plastic, you know, so then the trucks have to use more gas and therefore, you know, fossil fuel use than no. they would in plastic. But it just in general, plus then also I'm concerned about ingesting plastics through food products that are in plastic. But just in general, is it is it better from re you know, recycling to try to yeah. Yeah, that's and something in the glass versus a plastic container? That's a complicated one because A, we no longer have any glass recycling plants in Massachusetts. There was one in uh, that closed about five years ago. Hmm. Uh, so now they're still collecting the glass and where is it going to go? So um, it's being shipped to other states uh, it is being broken down and mixed in with asphalt, believe it or not, in road paving projects. Um, so, uh, so that's that's a, a challenging one. Um, as far as is it more environmentally friendly than plastic? Again, it's complicated because it is heavier. It's heavier to transport. Um, 
you know, I do a lot of litter cleanups myself. And, you know, when you come across broken glass on the side of the road, that's very difficult to clean up, you know, because you instead of one item, you're picking up 20 items. Um, and uh, so, uh, but, you know, the, the, the main ingredient in glass is, is uh, sand. So that, that, that is more, as far as uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, I'm pretty sure glass is, is not as bad as plastic. So um, in all these, you know, issues, there's no silver bullet solution. You know, it's always some kind of trade-off between, well, oh, this one does this, this one does that. Um, but uh, so I don't know if that answered the question, but that's the current state. Oh, of I think it's, 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 it's complicated. I'm going to, we have uh, two folks um, uh, who are joining us through Zoom today, Deb and Mary Beth. So I'm going to ask both Deb and Mary Beth, I'm going to try to unmute them or, or they can feel free to unmute themselves. Deb and Mary Beth, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask, uh, ask Neil of a question if you would like to do so. Deb, do you have a question? Um, no, I, I don't, but Neil, um, very, very interesting presentation. So thank you very much. And I'm going to be sure to check out your, your webpage and see what I can do on an individual basis to start. Thank you. Uh, one one men, oh, thing I didn't mention uh, is a website called RecycleSmartMA.org. And that's it's on our website as well, but that's a, a mass DEP website that's all about recycling. So it actually have they have something called a recyclopedia. So if you say, "Jesus, you know, is this stapler recyclable?" Yeah, put put in stapler, and it will tell you yes or no. Uh, in most cases, it's it's in the database. Uh, if not, you can say, "Hey, can you add this to, to the database?" So uh, so that that is a good guide. Um, mm. Can you repeat that, Neil? It's recycle yeah, uh, RecycleSmartMA.org. .org. Thank you. And Mary Beth, I'm going to ask you, do you do you have a question for uh, Neil, Mary Beth, if you want to ask Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm tuning in from California, so oh, yeah. um, it's a little early out here, but um, I wanted to thank you for your presentation, and it was very, very interesting. I live in East Ham, and... Um, trying to get more involved in you know community beautifying our community and actually um meeting neighbors and people that are like-minded and trying to raise awareness so um i just checked out your facebook page and i, I really appreciate all the information today okay thank you thank you both deb and mary beth for your comments to mary beth i feel the same way so maybe we could connect once again my name is harriet emerson forgive me if i didn't introduce myself i'm harriet emerson one of the hybrid program administrators here so uh, i would definitely love to connect uh, like i say this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart so if anyone's interested in getting together and picking up some letter and uh you know having to get someone to chat with and socialize with and connect with while we're doing it that would be great uh, yes, so, sir. Thank you. Yes, yes. So you can reach me here, uh, and we have everyone's contact information because you registered. And you know, I hate to put you on the spot, but I just uh, real if you, off the top of your head, uh, maybe just like the one uh, top one or two or three tips you have for folks who are looking to reduce either their litter production or help uh, clean up their communities. What would you? Uh, where are the just the kind of actions, you know, people you talked about, and I really appreciate how you guys keep Massachusetts beautiful as a very action-oriented program. So just, you know, one or two really easy kind of low-hanging fruit things that people can do to help uh, just, uh, you know, stop litter at its source. Well, I guess I'll, I'll the littering part is easy, you know, don't litter, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, when you're finished drinking your nip, you know, just keep it in the car. Don't throw it out the car window. No, I joke. Um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people doing that, driving around and drinking. Um, but uh, on the waste reduction side, you know, uh, just 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 try to think before you, you know, use single use plastic. So um, like we recently had some friends over, you know, around the fire pit, and this was my my event versus my wife's events. You know, that she said, "Well, you, she, she, all right, you're you're in charge." Said, okay, so you know, we had some desserts we put out, and you know, she would 
for whatever reason, even though we have plenty of dishes, whenever, you know, she always just defaults to, you know, paper plates and plastic spoons and forks. And I said, no, you know what? We have enough of these items in our house. So we're going to use real silverware and real plates. And we're not going to generate all that trash. Um, you know, reusable uh, coffee mug that I use here. Uh, my reusable water bottle. So those are easy ones. Um, another one that's people... Um, as far as recycling, a lot of people are not aware of is plastic bags um, are, do not go in your recycling bin. Anything that's stretchy plastic does not go because it gums up the machinery at the plant. But that, that material can be recycled at your local supermarket. Um, Trex decking actually uses that material. That's the raw material for the decking that they make. So we have a bin underneath our sink. So every plastic bag, whether it's, you know, you bought a loaf of bread or bagels or whatever it might be, you, you just stuff it in the bin and then you take it, put it in a larger bag and then take it to, back to the supermarket. And, uh, and when you start doing that, you, you, you quickly learn, wow, we, we go through a lot of plastic film, that's the material in this household. You, know, you didn't realize how much of it there is. So as long as it's clean and dry, you can put it in there. Um, so that's, uh, and then lastly, food waste is a big part of the waste stream. Um, uh, so composting, I don't know if East Ham offers anything in yes. that regard. Uh, yeah. We have, we've signed up for black earth comp composting now, you know, we actually have to pay for the service so a lot. So I know that a lot of people, you know, aren't voluntarily going to say, I, I want to spend more money. Uh, but um if, if it is important to you, that's, you know, it's a big, probably about 40% of the waste stream is compostable. Uh, so that's, you know, we can preserve space in our landfills if we compost that stuff versus sending it into a landfill. I have a comment on the plastic bag. I just bought produce at Shaw's and right on the plastic bag that I put it in, it says recyclable. It says recyclable? Yeah. Yeah, good. You can also buy like mesh bags so you don't have to use 10 well, different plastic bags every time you go to the market. Would I put that bag in with the plastic? Not in your bin, no. It is recyclable. They don't say where it's recyclable. That's the tricky part. So if you put that in your bin, it is not going to get recycled. It's going to cause problems actually at the plant. So it needs to go in a separate waste stream back to the supermarket. There's usually a bin right out front for bags. But that's confusing. It yeah, was, I said and say it was simple. <laughs> I have to say another thing. Of I, read course. In, I read in the paper and I haven't done it. A young lady started a business on the Cape and you could go and buy your must, buy a container through her filled with mustard or ketchup or whatever. Then as you use it, you can go back and re- I believe she's in Dennis. I haven't been there, but I believe Neither she's have I, right, that's... right. Have a field trip there or something. I don't know, but I've been meaning, yes, yeah. I like that idea because I imagine she gets them in really large containers. Yeah. So yes, I've been, thank you for reminding me of that. I've been meaning to, to do that. So I go on that field trip with you. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll do it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, Deb is asking, is it possible to get a copy of Neil's presentation? So I am recording it. Just let me, uh, yeah, so we're, I am recording it. So we'll, we'll maybe do a bit of minor editing, but thank you so much for that question. And thank you so much for the interest. And so everybody uh, who was uh, registered for this meeting, when it's available, when we put it on the, a public platform, you should get a notification or just just follow up with me. I'm Harry Emerson. You can call, leave a message for me here. I also put my email in the chat. And uh, if we somehow it falls through the cracks and we don't send you an email that the recording is available, please feel free to contact me. Just call here and they'll leave a message for me if I'm not here. You can email me and we'll make sure. Um, and thank you so much, Neil, for uh, allowing us to record this event. So any other questions or comments or well thanks so much Neil so once again I, I would very much um, you know I've been doing on an individual basis and I see people post mm -hmm. on 
our local next door and 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 there's a gentleman he goes and he uh you know um does this tr daily trash haul so i get the sense there where many people are kind of in their individual way um you know working to um help um uh, pick up litter and that type of thing but yeah. i think we could get something somewhat semi-organized going here and i think that the town of east cam i can follow up with them there is a anti-littering recycling committee so i should um i'll, I'll share uh, yeah and um, you, you can also check out Keep Barnstable Beautiful on Facebook yeah. as well uh, if yeah. you want to see what's happening uh, more locally. Oh, okay, great, great. All right, well, thank you so much. You know, I think this is a really helpful presentation. You gave us a lot of resources, which will be uh, in the recording. And I know people can also, if they have additional questions, can, can follow up with you as well. Okay, thanks so much, Harry. Everyone else, okay. appreciate okay. it. Good luck with your furnace. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Everybody, that was a really good presentation. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. That was very good. Yes, it was excellent. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's probably recyclable. It can be.